Welcome. In this video, I'm going to go over the process of installing Ubuntu 20.10 Groovy Gorilla on Raspberry Pi 4. And this is a 64 bit version of Ubuntu, and this is the hardware I'm running it on. It's a Canakit Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB model. So this is one step below the 8 GB model. It should be perfectly capable of running this. Where you might want 8 GB is if you're running multiple applications at the same time or lots of browser tabs, things like that. Having more RAM would be advantageous. So I'll put a link to this and the other hardware I'm using in the description, and if you use those links, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So for storage, I'm using this Samsung Bar 128 GB flash drive. This is USB 3.1. The Raspberry Pi supports USB 3.0, but this is backwards compatible. So I did a previous video where I set the Raspberry Pi up for booting from a USB drive, and I'll put a link below to that video. If you're using a USB drive on your Raspberry Pi, you want to make sure you plug it into the USB port that supports 3.0, and it's the middle ones on the Raspberry Pi 4, and you can tell because the middle is blue on those ports. So I have the 128 gigabyte model. I previously did a video where I benchmarked this, and I got about 127 megabytes per second read speed on it. So it didn't really top out the performance of this flash drive. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to raspberrypi.org and go to downloads and then download the Raspberry Pi imager for your system. So that exists for Windows, Mac, or Ubuntu. So I've downloaded the Mac version. Next you're going to want to go to ubuntu.com and then go to download and then under Ubuntu for IoT click on Raspberry Pi 2, 3, or 4. So if we scroll down We'll see this matrix here telling you what versions exist. So I've done previous videos on Ubuntu 20.04, and it was available as a server version as 64-bit, and then you could install the desktop on top of that. This is a native desktop build for Raspberry Pi. So this is the link I clicked on. I downloaded this to my drive. I'm not going to do that in the video, so you don't have to wait for it. And then there are other versions too. So if you're new to Ubuntu, they have different tracks that you can go on, and 20.04 is what's called long-term support, and that has support for five years. And then 2010 is their development release, and that goes until July 2021. So you would typically want to run a server on the LTS versions of Ubuntu, but the desktop, it's not as important to have such a steady release, so you may want to go with the development release for that. So I have both of these downloaded. I'll go into Raspberry Pi Imager. I'll choose my OS, I'll scroll down to Use Custom, and I have a lot of ISOs I've downloaded here, but I want this one. It's Ubuntu 20.10 preinstalled desktop arm64 plus raspy.image.xz. So XZ is a compression, just like zip or gzip, and you can leave it in the compressed form on your computer. So once you download this, you might want to save it in case you want to reinstall. You don't have to unzip it or uncompress it. The Raspberry Pi Imager can deal with it natively. So I have the flash drive plugged in right now. It's formatted as FAT. That's this drive here. So I'll go to Choose SD Card, and I'll choose my flash drive. So it says Choose SD Card, but it does work for flash drives. And then I'll hit Write. It'll ask me for my password. This is the password on your computer. I'll hit OK. And now it will write the drive and then it will verify it. I'll speed up the video now. Okay, that finished. I'll hit continue and then I'll pull the drive out of the computer. I'm going to insert this into the Raspberry Pi and boot it up. Okay, the system is booted and we have system configuration here. I'll choose my language, which is English. I'm going to choose the default for this keyboard layout. I'll hit continue. My time zone is Chicago, so I'll hit continue. It's asking me for my name. It wants a computer name. It says that name already exists on the network because I was testing this earlier and the network apparently did not forget. 
So I'll type a password in here. I'll hit continue. Okay, it finished the install and then it rebooted. I'll click on my login and type my password in. Okay, we have an online account set up. I'll skip this. I'll say I don't want to send system info right now. I'll hit next. I'll leave location services off. I'll hit next. And that says you're ready to go. You can use software to install apps like these. So we have Plex, GIMP, Get Kraken, Darktable, Chromium, Telegram Desktop, and Inkscape. So I'll hit done. So here we have the Groovy Gorilla Desktop. I really like these desktop images they've been putting in their latest releases. They're pretty cool looking, I think. So let's try and open up a web page. So it took a little while for that to load, but it's the first time loading. Close the privacy policy. I'll open up CNN. These new sites tend to take a long time to load because they have so much junk on them. More secure encrypted DNS lookup. So this automatically will encrypt your DNS. So I'll just say, okay, I got it. You can also disable that. Okay, let's uh, click through on a story. It's lagging a little bit, but I mean, I think it's more or less usable. You could surf the web on the original Raspberry Pi and it was incredibly slow. So this is taking quite a bit of time. I think my Macs and PCs would have loaded this quite a bit faster. I'm going to load up some video now. So this one's in 1080p, and right off the bat, we don't have any audio right now, which is good because it's a political commercial. So I will, I'll let that run out. So what I want to do is I want to go down to the squares in the bottom that says show applications, and I'll type sound in here, and we can open up the sound control panel. And if we go down here to output device, we see headphones built in, that's the default. It has four options here, and I tried this multi-channel output right above headphones, and that didn't work. I'll switch to that real quick. And then I switched to the top one, and that did seem to work. Let's hit test here. Like more bookings. So if I hit test. Front, left, front, right. That works. So once you change those settings, it changes it. But when I rebooted, the audio didn't work again. So I had to come back in here and change it. And I'm not sure off the top of my head how to make that the default. But that was kind of a pain. So if you need to use Ubuntu with the audio output, you may want to look into how to make that the default. I'm sure there's probably some setting that can be changed. So I'll close this, and then I'll go back into here. It's still playing an ad. I'll skip that. From the people in... Welcome. Run in this, this video, I'm going to take a look at the leaf collecting power of this Ego I'll right click and say stats for nerds so we can look at that. So I've done a number of other videos on this mower and so Ego we're not at 1080p general, and resolution. I'll put a link below to my Ego playlist so you can check those out. And I'll also put a link in. So here's 1080p60. We'll see if this will play that. So thus far, it's not working. I don't know if this is going to start working or attempt to start working. And I am plugged into gigabit ethernet. I'm on 40 megabit internet. And it still has not loaded. I'll link in the description to some Ego mowers on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you so, any extra. Give so I currently have this set up on height level three. And then I have yeah, the, the video is kind of frozen here. right now. So 
I would not say this was it's great hard to for do one-handed one here while I hold the camera. I don't think this is a good option for that. I think Raspberry Pi OS would probably be a better option. There may be some way to tweak that and optimize it. It doesn't appear to be using hardware video decoding. And if I open up a terminal, it doesn't have the OMX player command line utility for playing video. So if you want the multimedia capabilities of the Raspberry Pi, I think Raspberry Pi OS would probably be a better option or using something like LibreLec or uh, a specific media engine. It comes with LibreOffice, let's open that. That opened in a decent amount of time, certainly not as fast as a fast you know, Mac or PC, but. And I assume it has all of the other ones installed here, so we can open up uh, Calc. Yeah, Calc opened up okay. So when you're switching back and forth between applications, like if I have LibreOffice Calc and Writer open, and then maybe open the web browser and Mail, that's where you really want to have more RAM. And since this is a 64-bit operating system, this can access all eight gigabytes of RAM. So my take on this is that it seems to work better in some ways and worse in others. If you need the Ubuntu desktop environment on a Raspberry Pi, it's here. If you just need a Linux environment, the Raspberry Pi OS is probably going to be more optimized. But if there's software that you need that's not on Raspberry Pi OS and it's on Ubuntu, this might be an option for you. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.